Hey everyone, Dave here, and we are going to open up Psalm chapter 5. I hope that you've been enjoying uh, the Psalms and just digging into God's Word and practicing the REAP method. Um, and we're going to look at Psalm chapter 5. And so if you haven't read Psalm chapter 5, I want to encourage you to take some time right now, pause the video, uh, read Psalm chapter 5 to its entirety, circle some words, uh, think through some of the, the, the thoughts that are coming to your mind, write them down in your journal, uh, and then we'll come back and I'll just share some of the observations that I made when I was reading the, this Psalm. I hope that you enjoyed that time of reading and I hope that God's Spirit spoke to you and just showed some things to you. Here are some of the things that God spoke to me when I read this passage. I see uh, four different scenes here in, in this psalm. One is that um, uh, David um, goes to God in prayer. Do you see that word prayer at the very end? Uh, he goes to God in prayer, but did you notice what kind of prayer he prayed? He said, listen to my words, Lord. Consider my lament. Uh, I love that word lament. That word lament means this cry, this expression of grief and sorrow. So something is terribly wrong in David's life. In his prayer, he cries out and says, hear my cry for help, my King, my God. So in, in, in David's life, something was happening and he went to God in prayer and he didn't hold back. You, you see that in this text. Next, scene number two, David knows that God's going to hear him. He knows that God is right there and he's going to hear him. He has this confidence that although he's praying, God is going to hear him. Where is, how do we see that? Notice what it says in verse 3 and onward. It says, in the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. There's that confidence. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait expectantly. He knows his a prayer is going to be answered. How does he know? Notice the next verses. He's, For you are not a God who is pleased with the wickedness. Uh, you, uh, with you, evil people are not welcome. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies. The bloodthirsty and deceitful you, Lord, detest. So where is David's confidence coming from? He knows that he is a man that is not after those things. He is not a man that uh, is evil. He's not a man that is pursuing wickedness. He's not a man who is arrogant. He's not a man who um, is doing wrong. Uh, bloodthirsty and deceitful. He's not that man. And so he can approach God and pray and cry out to him. And he can have confidence that he's going to hear. So the second scene is God, David knows that God's going to hear him. Third scene is David's asking for God to help and work on his behalf. You notice what it says here? But I, by your great love, uh, can come into your house. He has this confidence that he can come into the house of God because he is greatly loved. In reverence, that's a great word right there. Uh, in reverence, I bow down toward your holy temple. So there is this uh, understanding that God or, or David is asking God to execute his judgment. To, he's coming before him out of knowing that he's loved, um, coming into his house with reverence. Um, and, and what we see later on in the text, look at verse 6. Lead me, Lord, to your righteousness. That's a great word, righteousness. Uh, because my enemies make your way straight for, before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with malice. Their throat is an open grave. Uh, their tongues uh, tell lies. Notice the words tongue, throat, heart. Everything about them is wrong. And so he's asking God, God, work on my behalf. Execute your judgment because you do not like evil men. Uh, let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them from, uh, uh, for their many sins. He's going to God, rather taking things in his own hand, and he's entrusting this to God. Um, but then notice what he says. This is the fourth scene. David just turns all of his life's problems over to him. Notice what he says in verse 11. Let all, circle the word all, that's all of us who take refuge, that's to come to God and, and refuge and, and, and in safety in you be glad. Let them sing for joy. Spread your protection, circle that word protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. 
You surround those um, with your favor as a shield. All of those words, shield, protection, refuge, are all forms of what God can do in us if we just turn to Him in prayer. And so when I was reading this, the application for me, when I was reading this after observing this is, one of the things I ought to do when strife comes, when, when difficult times come, is not take it in my own hands. I need to just go to God and trust um, God with, with whatever is going on. If it's people that is causing me difficulty, then I need to just trust God with that person and I need to let go and allow God to do what only He could do in that person's life. That's what I took from this, this, this psalm. And so out of that now, I just want to pray in, in light of what we just learned. So let's just pray. God, we thank you once again for your word. I thank you that you illuminated it to our hearts and our eyes and our souls. God, I, I know once again in this world that we're going to face difficulties. People are going to create moments in our life that are going to be difficult. God, I pray that we wouldn't be a people that would take it into our own hands, but we would be a people that come to you in prayer. I pray that we would come to you in our, with our laments, with our cries, and that you would hear us. I pray that we would stand in confidence, knowing that those who are following you, we can approach you with, with boldness and pray with boldness. God, would you, if, if there is anything in our lives, any, someone that is causing difficulty in our lives, God, you know about it, and so now we're going to surrender it to you. Would you look after that? In your hands, we trust that situation to you. And so, God, we now just pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. Church family, I hope that that was encouraging to you. We will be back again next week looking at Psalm chapter 6.